Are you sick of making extremely slow progress on your tiny house journey? Finding the right resources and teaching online can be such a headache. That's why I've put together a free online tiny house summit that is coming up on November 4th through 6th. It features 30 sessions with famous tiny house experts like Dee Williams, Jay Schaefer, favorites like Macy Miller, and so many other names that I can't even list here. The summit is organized around three days of teaching. Day one is plan, day two is build, day three is live. Did I mention that it is free to attend November 4th through 6th? Head over to tinyhousesummit.co where you can register for access for the free summit. Again, that website is tinyhousesummit.co where you can register for free for the 2022 Tiny House Summit. I can't wait to share this with you. I've been working on it for months now, and it's truly the best free offering I've ever put together. All right, I'll see you in November. I can't wait to share the summit with you. That website again is tinyhousesummit.co. There was always a big stigma behind it, at least when we started. You'd ride around, and if somebody saw that you're on an e-bike or an electric skateboard, it'd be like, you know, a dude with a big beer belly sitting on, sitting on the corner drinking a, a two liter soda. Welcome to the Tiny House Lifestyle Podcast, the show where you learn how to plan, build, and live the tiny lifestyle. I'm your host, Ethan Waldman, and this is episode 237 with Rob Rast. Rob Rast is an entrepreneur who has raised millions of dollars through crowdfunding for his e-bikes and e-skateboards, and yet he lives van life. He lives in a van. And so in this interview, I wanted to find out why someone who is so successful would choose to live in a van when it seems like a pretty alternative lifestyle and certainly not one you see amongst that startup and tech kind of crowd. And also what the benefits are for him as an entrepreneur working, well, he doesn't work from his van, but living the van life so that he can be more productive and closer to his work. We also talk about his e-bikes and electric skateboards. Both product lines are things that I think are really fun. I enjoy his brand's sense of humor. And I also see a lot of potential for people living in vans or people living in tiny houses to use e-bikes or e-skateboards to get around in an eco-friendly way. So I hope you stick around for the interview. Uh, it's, It's a fun one. All right. See you there. I am here with Rob Rast. Rob is a pilot, surfer, and serial entrepreneur who lives in his van. He's the founder and president of FLX Bike and Miles Board, two e-mobility companies set on changing the shape of transportation as we know it. Rob, welcome to the show. Ethan, thank you so much for having me on. I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, yeah, me too. So uh, I'm curious, were you living the van life when you started FLX bike and miles board, or was that something that you chose to do like after you launched those companies? That was something I chose to do after I launched the companies. And in partly because I was working in the businesses, it was almost uh, like I had to do it. Yeah. And I'd be t- happy to tell you that story later. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that you, that you had to do it. Actually, I want to hear that story now. <laughs> so in this industry is is especially challenging yeah. for a person like me who uh, I'm a college dropout. I've got no no formal business training or anything like that, uh-huh. and the the whole scope of the business in my past businesses has just been trying to figure it out as you go. So with that in mind, certainly made some wrong turns and detours along the way. Mm-hmm. And in our business, when we place orders for stuff and go and build bikes, we need to put all this cash up front and we won't see the product for a year sometimes and then be able to sell it and cash out. So it's very cash flow demanding Mm -hmm. a manufacturing business like this. We make electric bikes and skateboards. And in 2019, we, we were facing bankruptcy. We were looking at our, at our numbers. Like we've got all these bills to pay for product coming in. We're not selling enough. What are we going to do? And so my business partner and I at the time We're trying to figure out, you know, do we need to shut down this business or what? And 
I met a mentor then that kind of got my mindset straight. He's like, you just need to only focus on getting sales, launching new products and making sure it works. Like, don't get down, just go do it. And so from that point forward, I made a bet with my business partner, bet half of my skateboard company on it, that our next product launch, we would raise a million dollars or 3 million actually. And that's when I left the apartment that I was renting to take that rent money and just put it into the business. I bought my Sprinter van, which was already converted, moved into that, loaded it up with bikes and started driving that around the country, promoting the product, making videos. And it was really the all in moment for me going to the van life. Yeah. So, wow, that's, that's a unique story. I feel like you kind of went nuclear and just combined your, your life and your work together. Yeah, there is no separation at all for me at this point. <laughs> um, and so was that that bike that that raised three million dollars? Was that is that the baby maker? That was the baby maker. Yeah. So we had thirty days. It it did three million like an hour before midnight on the thirtieth day, and then they let us extend it for another thirty, and it went on to raise thirteen million dollars in two months. So wow. that was kind of the product of, it was a perfect storm because COVID hit right then and bike sales started exploding, but it was just, just luck and also just, just pure dedication in the van life certainly helped with that. Yeah. A, a buddy of mine who's, who like would never buy an e-bike, like a traditional e-bike because he thinks they look too nerdy. Definitely yeah. texted me an Instagram of the baby maker. I was like, dude, look at this bike. That's awesome. So. You definitely hit it there. Yeah. Hell yeah. I love hearing that. What is your, what's your van like? Tell me, tell me what it's all about. So I got a van that was converted already. And it was actually, I was on Craigslist when I was first exploring, mm -hmm. like, oh, van life sounds cool. Uh, let me see what's out there. And I saw this one, it looked really nice. And I knew nothing about vans. So I kept searching and there was nothing that came close to it in terms of price and, you know, yep how how it was inside so by the time i contacted this guy it was a few days later and he's like oh you know what sorry this van has sold already i was like oh crap and so i emailed him yeah. again well did you get your asking price for it no i got about 5k under so i said all right i'll come uh, with full cash right now will you sell it to me instead he's like yep and so i just jetted up there because <laughs> the buyer was out of state jetted up there yeah pulled the cash out gave it to him and i got the van it's a 2013 Mercedes Sprinter. It's the long okay. extended wheelbase and it's fully built inside. It's got a queen bed, uh, two burner propane stove, mm -hmm. 50 gallon water tank. It's got solar panels. It has a deck on top, which is super nice. cool. I love going up there and I'll just do some yoga or some tanning. It's got a shower yeah. inside closet and a, the tiniest fridge you can imagine. It's great though. I mean, and, and, you know, the nature of starting a business and I'm sure doing something like what you've done where you're doing a, a big crowdfunding launch and then having to kind of scramble to like, then put that money to use and like do all that stuff. It's like, you probably don't have much time to keep up an apartment or a house. Probably don't even want to spend a lot of time commuting back and forth from an office to, to where you live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, that's been huge is the time savings. Mm -hmm. I just typically I'll park it right behind my shop. And so I wake up in the morning, okay. roll out of bed and I'm at work. Uh, same thing, leaving yep. at night. And I noticed before when I was living in an apartment, you know, there's nights when you're grinding until midnight, 1, 2 a.m. And the last thing you want to do is pack up everything, go drive home. If you can just go from the computer where you're grinding and, and just roll into bed, it's great. So it's, it's been a massive, massive time saver. And to be able to funnel that time into more work has been huge. Yeah, absolutely. So are you, are you based anywhere in particular? Are you still kind of living that nomadic lifestyle, going around, showing your products? Or are you, are you based somewhere now? I'm based mostly at my office here in San Diego. We are launching a new product next week, actually, next Monday, October right. 17th. It's right. called The Weapon. Okay. It's an electric mountain bike. So it's made to be off-road, do downhills, like the most fun mountain bike riding you can imagine. That's what this product is made for. So for me, 
uh, my goal is to take the van out, take some bikes out and just go camp out at, you know, some of the best mountain bike park we can find, be riding there every day, making videos, getting people on the product and just showing people what these bikes can do. So that's something super fun that I'm looking forward to. I hope you bring, bring us some in the Northeast. There's incredible riding in Vermont and, and New Hampshire okay. and Maine. Heck yeah. Give me the name yeah. of some places if you yeah. got any. All right. All right. After, you know, after the call, I'll give you a few names, although it is, you know, it's no San Diego here. We're getting, we're coming into uh, a long and cold and snowy season. So, so maybe oh, in the spring. I bet. Although we'll get fall some snow tires on it. Some of my favorite. Okay. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I would say that like the majority of, of the listeners of, of, Tiny House Lifestyle Podcast are are either living or interested in living in a in a tiny house on wheels, um, and I've noticed an interesting trend, which is that people who get really into living in tiny houses oftentimes realize. I mean, now they're realizing it before, but they realize that like a tiny house on wheels that weighs you know ten to fifteen thousand pounds and requires a huge truck to tow, it's not the right thing to travel in. Mm -hmm. And so they end up building out a van to travel because they want, Mm -hmm. they still want to be able to like, kind of have that feeling of bringing their home with them. And the van is, is small enough. But I, then I think that there's like a third layer to that, which is that from the van, you need some way to get around. Like personally, you know, you don't want to drive everywhere. You want to experience wherever you are on a bike or on a skateboard mm-hmm. or on foot. And so I feel like the like tiny house van and e-bike, it's like a, the trifecta of perfection of like of personal freedom and mobility. Totally. So my, my first big van trip, when I got this thing, I, I threw in, I had two baby makers in the back and yeah. three electric skateboards and still room for more. Uh-huh. But it's awesome because especially when you go to somewhere where it's crowded or like the beautiful tourist destinations, parking is not fun Mm -hmm. for especially a 20, 22 foot vehicle. You finally find a parking space. You'll be a mile away from where you need to go. And if you if you want to make good time, which I always want to do, I always want to do things fast. Okay. Yep. Just grab a skateboard or a bike and ride it to where you're going. Yep. The other part of that, too, is the slower you're going, the, the more you see. So when you're driving your van, you're going a lot faster. If you get into a bike or a skateboard, you can slow things down, stop a lot easier, stop at yep. you know, beautiful yep. cliffside or whatever it is, the, the beach. Walking, you can see potentially more, but you go a lot less, less far. So it's yeah. the sweet spot, in my opinion, the e-mobility product for that last mile, last five, 10 miles that you want to get around. Yeah, it seems like that that market is just exploding. I mean, I live in Burlington, Vermont, and it's a very like bike bike friendly and there's a lot of people who commute by bike and just like the number of those bikes that are e-bikes now has just like exploded. It feels like in the last year or two. Oh, totally. There there was always a big stigma behind it, at least when we started. Yeah. You'd ride around and if somebody saw that you're on an e-bike or an electric skateboard it'd be like you know a dude with a big beer belly sitting on sitting on the corner drinking a, a two liter soda and you say that's cheating you're lazy <laughs> like, yeah. what are you doing bro yeah. you probably drove here i'm out here having having the time of my life getting some exercise as much as i want and uh and like what do you care right it's not a race i agree with the sentiment that like you know there is a stigma around around e-bikes but then you, you make a good point that like anybody who says that you're cheating probably drove there. Mhm. Totally. And it it's come a long long way since since then. Yeah. Like once you once you try one out and you sit on it right you're like, "Oh, I get it. It's just more fun." Yeah. It's that simple. So which is like for somebody who maybe is living tiny or or doing the van life and they're they're thinking about like adding some e-bikes to the mix. Um, you know, which is, which is the one that you find is like kind of the most popular with the van lifers just in terms of being compact and being easy to, to kind of deploy, I guess is like the word that I'll use. Great question. The baby maker two is our, our lightest bike. It's 
one of the lightest e-bikes ever made actually it's it's about 33 pounds typical e-bikes you're talking 60 plus pounds so this thing's super light you can pick it up with one hand throw it over your head yeah if you've got a little garage area in the van or, or just a spot to park it bike rack it's super easy to carry you use a normal bike rack you don't need a special e-bike bike rack uh strip it off and, mm-hmm. and run it's also very affordable so the baby maker is definitely a go-to yeah it's our most popular model the baby maker two actually that just came out and then skateboards yeah, yeah. We've got the Phantom and the Sex Panther, both of which are, are crazy portable if you've got a tiny home. And I, I always carry my Sex Panther in my, in my Sprinter van wherever I go. It's so convenient. And also just major shout out for the, for the Anchorman. I'm guessing that's an Anchorman reference. I hope it is. It yeah. is. That it is. <laughs> I, I love the names of all these things. I, I think anytime you see a company that has a sense of humor, it's just it's more fun. It's just more fun to engage. I'm, I'm glad you see it that way because not everybody loves the names. We get some people, some grouchos, we're like, well, how could you name it that? I'd never write something that says baby maker on it. And we're like, we don't want you to write it if that's your attitude. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you got, <laughs> you're the pit viper of, of e-bikes and skateboards. Hey. I don't know if you're familiar, like pit viper, the sunglasses company. No, we absolutely love their work. They, they, they do some really incredible stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, here's a question. Cause like I didn't, I somehow I missed out, missed out on like growing up skateboarding and yeah. And I, I can see how in terms of being compact and easy to bring somewhere that there, you know, you can't beat that. Um, mm-hmm. you know, is it, is it too late for me? Or like, can, can adults learn how to skateboard and Absolutely. get around on one of these things? Absolutely. So that's the thing with the electric skateboards. Um, you've got a remote yeah. and you just press forward to go, uh-huh. pull back to stop. It's uh-huh. too, like if you could play a video game, which has like 15 yeah. different buttons, this has one button basically. Forward, go, backward, yeah. stop. And on a normal skateboard, you've got to balance on one leg and throw one leg down on the street and kick as fast as you yeah. can. Yeah. This one, if you can just stand there and balance a little bit, you can do it. Like if you can stand up, you can ride a skateboard. Yeah. It's got three modes. Yeah. So you can start it in easy mode and just, just chill and cruise until you're comfortable with it. We recommend that for, for the newbies, mm-hmm. but we've got people mm-hmm. coming in all the time as interns or new employees who have never touched a skateboard. And by the end of their internship, they're absolutely shredding like more than, more than I do. And I've been skating half my life. Nice. Which do you think, because like the, the Sex Panther looks kind of like a longboard and then the Panther's like got, is like that smaller skateboard look, which, which is easier to, to learn, you think? The Sex Panther, you've got more real estate. So it's a, it's a bigger deck and you can get off-road wheels on it, which are more forgiving. So if you're running over big curves or things like that or not paying attention and you run over a massive rock, mm-hmm. you can usually get over it just fine. So Sex Panther is the easiest to learn on. The Phantom is just more portable. So we see yeah. a lot of college students or people that are doing a lot of commuting get the Phantom. You could even stick it in the locker at like 24-hour fitness, which is where yeah. a lot of our van, us van lifers like to go shower. So that's great. But either, either one, they're, they're both super fast, crazy range. Mm-hmm. Me personally, I, I use a Sex Panther more. Okay. Because it works every, it works 50% of the time every time. No. Absolutely. Whatever the number is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think your Sex Panther probably works every time, as long as it's charged. Yeah. It's illegal in 15 countries. Yeah, exactly. Um, do you see, um, you know, it's like, which came first, actually, the, the e-bikes or the skateboards? The e-bikes. We started working on those in 2014, launched them in 16. Okay. Launched our first skateboard in 2018, so about two years into it. Mm-hmm. We had all the infrastructure there. So we're like, why, you know, why not do skateboards? That's something I always wanted to do. Boosted beat me to it when they launched in about 09 or 2011, I forget. Okay. And uh, they're unfortunately out of business now. They grew too fast, flew too close to the sun. Okay. But a lot of their customers are switching over to our boards. Nice. Nice. Well, that's a, that's a good position to be in, I suppose. Yeah, I guess so. Do you, um, 
So you, you started on the bikes and then you like went smaller for the skateboards. Do you have an idea of like, you know, going, doing electric, I don't know what would be a step up from a bike, but like something between a van and a bicycle, does this exist? Um, yeah. So, I mean, electric cars is the absolutely huge business. I don't know if I'd want to get in, yeah. get into that. There's so much competition and it's even more complex yeah. than bikes, which are already challenging for a guy like me. But there's a couple things that, that I would really love to work on. One is electric surfboards mm-hmm. or hydrofoils, just because mm. they look so much fun. Yep. And the other electric airplanes. Mm. We're just getting to the point where the battery technology is dense enough, so enough energy per, mm-hmm. per kilogram or pound to be able to fly airplanes a reasonable distance. And it's only going to get better. So it's not a question of, of can you do it? It's just when. Uh, will it be practical? And we're getting there. So I'd love to be one of the people in that industry. It's a cool industry. We actually, there's a a company called Beta. They're making, I think, electric helicopters here in okay. uh, in Burlington. They're based at the at the airport here. Interesting. They like quadcopters. Yeah, that's sick. I think so. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of cool stuff going on in that space. It's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. There's one that actually combines hydrofoil and a plane, and I'm I'm blanking on the name right now, but it's essentially like a small plane that uses ground ground effects essentially to like fly really close to the water, but it it gets up on plane using a hydrofoil. Yeah, I've seen that. It's, it's like a kind of I don't know what they call it a sail plane, but it's it flies like six feet above the water. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah, I love that. So you're a pilot. Were you, were you a commercial pilot before you got into developing products and, and bikes? I was never a commercial pilot. I've, I've always just done it for fun. My dad was building an airplane uh-huh. when, when we were kids in the garage. He never finished it because his businesses got busy. So uh, I kind of want to complete the circle. I just bought my first airplane last year. And uh, now my goal is to take Great. my dad flying. But I just love to do it for fun. I'll throw the skateboards in the back, fly out somewhere, rip them around have some fun in it and there's nothing like it like i think all of us van lifers we just want to see more of the world and to be able to see it from another Mm -hmm. dimension from up high is is absolutely life-changing totally yes and talk about a a form of transportation where weight is very important especially you know in a small plane i'm sure the the lightweight bikes and boards make a difference Mm -hmm. yeah it's it's massive you're supposed to do before every flight weights and balances so you're literally like doing all these calculations like how much does the luggage weigh how far back is it from the engine and uh it's really important to make sure that you're within legal limits and safe limits even more so fly that plane nice i want to like circle back a little bit to to kind of the van life and and being an entrepreneur do you have any advice for for someone listening who is maybe already an entrepreneur who's who's living either tiny or in a van or, or they're thinking about it, like any design considerations or just things to think about when it comes to living tiny and, and also being an entrepreneur. Totally. So if you're full-time mobile in, you know, tiny home, van life, internet, obviously is huge. Mm-hmm. All, all businesses are, are run online nowadays. So that's, that's a massive consideration. You want to have a comfortable space to work. And maybe you're just going to coffee shop. That works. That's cool if you park at a coffee shop yeah. and do that. But I think you should definitely design into your space a nice place to work. Mine's not that comfy, to be honest. So sitting at my on my wooden bench seats with the pull-out table, yeah. it's really fatiguing after, after just an hour or two. My feet are like hanging in the air. They can't even touch the ground because the seats are so high. So that's definitely Ooh. consideration you want to make in the design of your space. Mm-hmm. That's a really good one. Uh, just if you are planning to work from that van to to make sure that there is a comfortable workspace. Yeah, there's some really cool, cool spaces. You know, check YouTube, Instagram, wherever. Yeah. Where people have just on the side of the van, a whole bench, table, and then they use regular office chairs in it and they'll just strap them down when they go. And that looks like a sweet setup to me. I'd love to have that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also, I mean, there's, I I've seen many van lifers and known some personally who, you know, 
really use their van like that mountain biking is some is is what they're most passionate about and that's why they're mobile and so you know rather than keeping and mountain bikes can be really expensive for nice ones so like rather than keeping your like mountain bike that like is worth what a like used Toyota Prius is worth on the back of your van you know you actually build a space inside the van so that mm-hmm. it's just you know it's not exposed to the elements to the road grime and just like theft Oh, that's super, super important. Yeah. You don't want your $10,000 mountain bike on the outside of your van. Yeah. People will unfortunately feel your shit. Yeah, it's true. It's sad. Um, well, Rob Rass, this has been so fun, fun to chat with you. I, I, um, do you have, I don't know if you sent me any, but if you have any pictures of the van, I'd love to include them on the the show notes page for people to check out your setup. Awesome. Yeah. I'll send you some, some pics of the van. And uh, hopefully we'll be taking this thing out to Santa's, what's it called? Santa's Village in SoCal. It's a a mountain bike park next week. So I'll do some videos, some vlogging there so people can check out what it's like to have this thing in the field with with the bikes in it. All right. Sounds good. Rob Rass, thanks so much for being a guest on the show. Ethan, thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much to Rob Rast for being a guest on the show today. You can find the show notes, including links to FLX Bike and Miles Board, as well as a complete transcript over at thetinyhouse.net slash 237. Again, that's thetinyhouse.net slash 237. As always, I am your host, Ethan Waldman, and I'll be back next week with another episode of the Tiny House Lifestyle Podcast. Hey, it's Ethan again, and you've made it to the end of the podcast episode. And if you're here, you must truly be a tiny house enthusiast. And so I want to specially invite you to join my free online tiny house summit. It's coming up November 4th through 6th, and it features 30 sessions with 30 different tiny house experts that I've kind of handpicked to speak about a number of topics. This event could be life-changing for your tiny house journey, and I want you to be there. So head over to tinyhousesummit.co, again, that's tinyhousesummit.co, to register free for the upcoming Tiny House Summit. All right, I'll see you there.